Well, hello and welcome to the, the last Crabby's Changing Room chat as we put out our double header of games, England in 2018 and 2019. You all have noticed that John Manson isn't with us today, but we are joined by former Scotland captain Greg Laidlaw. Greg, how are you? Very well, thank you. Thanks for uh, having me on. Fantastic to see you. Uh, and a couple of good games to talk about. England 2018 at BTM and then England down there at Twickenham in an incredible game. You call it a draw, but that doesn't do it the service it, it's required. It was it was an unbelievable game of rugby. Yeah, it sure was, Al. It was uh, very unique, uh, to say at least. Uh, as you'll know, it's any time you, you get to play against England, it's a special occasion. Playing for Scotland, um, it's always a very tough game uh, down in Twickenham. And certainly at uh, half-time of the 2019 fixture, we were... Uh, Certainly slightly worried, uh, but fortunately the boys are able uh, to pull that one back. We'll, we'll come on and talk about the 2019 fixture a wee bit later. Um, but for now, 2018, or for, for now even before that, you mentioned there it's a special occasion playing against England. What, what did it mean throughout your career? Or even as a, as a young guy growing up, watching those games and then having the opportunity to play them? Oh, it's just awesome, I think, the, the whole history around the game, the... Uh, it's a, the oldest international game in the world, so to, to be part of that history and, and to be involved in such a historic game is uh, is incredible, really. And I think certainly when I was growing up as a young kid, and that was always a game you know you, you wanted uh, to watch. You always wanted to see that one, and and to see Scotland try and get the victory was was, was awesome. Uh, so to be part of it was was brilliant, and I certainly always enjoyed the the challenge of playing against England. Now, it's occasionally been thrown at Scotland that they make too much of the England game and it's bigger than it should be. Now, I don't, I'm not an advocate of that myself. I think for all the reason you mentioned there, it is a special game of rugby. Where do, you, where do you stand on that one? Yeah, I would agree with you on that one, I think, uh, because it's, you know, England, uh, they're a great rugby nation, let's be honest. They've, got, they've always got strong teams, they've got great players. Uh, and I think it's just that challenge uh, going up, up against that when, you know, we're the, the smaller country uh, and it's against the old enemy, as, as we all know. And it's just that, that challenge to, to try and win that game is, is just an incredible one. 2018, uh, first and foremost. Now, we, as players, we'd always talk about the fact that the, the, the game doesn't just start when the first whistle goes. The game is from the build-up the whole week and the preparation you put into it. But this game, maybe more than most, it started a little bit earlier. Um, in fact, it started in the tunnel, if all the reports are to be believed. Um, give us what, what you saw of that, that recollection you have. Uh, yeah, apparently it started in the, in the tunnel there. Uh, one of the Scotland boys, I think, banged into, into somebody. But you know me, I, I was well out of the way uh, already by that point. And, and uh, thinking about the game, so I'm, I'm not too sure ex exactly what went on, but uh, there was a little bit of a scuffle, I think, in, in the tunnel. Um, obviously, before the kickoff, so it was uh, we're going to be in for an interesting uh, afternoon. Oh, it's, it's, there's a lot of tension, a lot of emotion playing around. So then you get the opportunity to go out and and get that 80 minutes in. Give us uh, give us memories of the game. It was one for me where for Hugh Jones showed his absolute best in a, in a Scotland jersey with a ball going forward. No, very much so. As, as always, uh, a tough test match. But I think we we got off to a really, uh, really good start in, in in the game. If if my memory serves me well, and I think that sort of just gave us that early confidence uh, going into the game. And, and I always feel that's vitally important for a Scotland team playing playing against England because, as I mentioned before, they're, they're always a strong team. Uh, they've always got strong players, so you need to start well. And I think. We did start well on that occasion, and that just gives everybody around about you the confidence. It gets the crowd into the game early, and then, as you mentioned there, Hugh Jones I think was was excellent on the day. He caused a lot of problems uh, going forward with, with the ball in hand, and uh, you know, and, and creating space for other boys as well. And you know, I, I think you're going to touch on it um, a little bit further on, but you know, it helps when you got somebody like Finn playing as well and, and chucking ridiculous passes. Talk us through that ridiculous pass. Yeah, I think uh, it was one of the ones. It was we were quite deep in our own half. I think we were pretty much just outside of twenty-two. And uh, as my relationship sort of developed with Finn over the years, I always knew when he, he was he was keen to go and, and itching to get the ball in his hands. He used to just chuck one hand out, and that was the sort of signal he wanted. It so 
I looked up, he was ready to go, so we just let the ball go and um, the rest is history, as I say. Obviously, Finns just looked up, I think. I think John, uh, Jonathan Joseph kind of stepped out of line a little bit and tried to put him off, um, as some defenders try and do. But Finn almost disregarded him and, and simply ripped an incredible pass over the top 20-odd metres uh, straight into the hands. I think it was Hugh Jones again, or, or Hoggy. Uh, and then we made, were able to make a bust up the right-hand touchline and... Uh, and we actually scored a really nice try off the back of it. And again, Finn was involved and he chucked a nice little delay pass uh, to put, I think, Sean Maitland in, in the, the top left corner, I think. Well, you've got experience of, both, of playing nine uh, and ten, mostly nine through your career, but plenty at ten as well. Uh, you talk about the, the ability to control the game and the decisions you need to make. What happens when the nine and ten are on different pages? How did you deal with that one? Because like you used to talk about Finn sticking his hand out. Now I've played many times with Finn, and at times <laughs> even as a skipper, I'd be thinking, "What are you doing?" And the good thing about Finn and a few other guys like him is at night times at ten it comes off. But what was the relationship like there? How did the communication work? Yeah, it was good. I think Finn's so excitable and he loves to attack that I learned probably over the course of my time playing with him is sometimes just don't give him the ball. Was, uh, was probably the best solution. <laughs> Sometimes I remember we were playing against Ireland. Um, I think it must have been 2017, maybe. And he, you know, we never started the game too well. And he was, he was calling for the ball in hour 22. And I think we were going to run it or something. And I was like, not a chance for him. I was like, just hold on a minute. I think we'll just kick this one and, and stay in the game. So, but it's, and I think that's just something you learn, you know, over the years. And he'd probably be shouting at me saying, you know, you should have gave me it. it was it was on, but. Uh, I'd, I'd rather I'd stick to the kick on that occasion. So I think is you just build their relationships and coming back to the decisions, I think uh, certainly coming back to that pass ever so slightly is, yeah, that was uh, just magnificent, you know, to have the, the speed of the vision, but also the accuracy of the pass to, to see that it was on and get the ball into that space uh, just allowed us to, to make that break. Now, 2018 would have been the last time that you played against England at BT Murrayfield. Um, how much of a, of a factor is that? How much of a factor is, is the home crowd? And you've touched on it already, but how special an occasion is it to play England at home? Yeah, it's awesome. I think that was probably something I learned again over the course of my career. I was, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm passionate Scotsman and, and, and sometimes you have to block that out and, and simply focus on the rugby. And definitely uh, I was able to do that on that day and probably play one of my best games probably against England because you need to play well to, to beat them. Um, so, but it's, it's awesome, you know, driving into Murrayfield, you always get that sense of a uh, real connection with the crowd and stuff like that on that specific day get playing against England. So, but again, it comes back to the rugby. You've got you to sometimes forget who's in the opposition changing room if you can and simply focus on yourself and, and get the best performance out of each other. Now, it was a, a fantastic game of rugby. Now, in a strange way, it was almost eclipsed by the following year, which was a draw uh, down at Twickenham. Now, you were on a bench for that game. Talk us through what was going through your head in that first 40 minutes. I was sitting in the crowd, but I had clearly no opportunity to influence it. What are you thinking when you're sitting on the bench looking at that, that 30, 31 7 that was at half time? Yeah, um, I'm sitting here smiling now, but I wasn't smiling uh, in 2019. When I was, <laughs> well, firstly, when I was on the bench, to be honest. And then secondly, um, yeah, half-time when we were, uh, we were 31-7 down, I was I was pretty worried, um, I think, as everybody else was. And I was worried before the game, if I'm honest now. I think, yeah, I remember, we probably hadn't trained well all week. The, the, the campaign probably hadn't went. How would I like to, like to, to have went? And uh, I remember getting down to, to England, um, must have been on the Friday at some point for the, for the start of the game. And um, we had a players meeting uh, the night before the game because I, I was worried. I just felt we were a little bit loose. And I just said to the boys, especially after what happened in 2018, I was like, you know, uh, England have been waiting for us for over a year. Uh, I, I think we just need to have a bit of a reality check here and understand what's coming at us tomorrow because they, they're going to be firing all cylinders. So, obviously, no, nobody paid any attention to that. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then we had to have another uh, 
have, have another chat at half time and uh, <laughs> and go from there. No, it's funny we were having the same conversations pre game, but mine were in a, a bar over a pint. But I just remember thinking exactly the same that you know there was a bit of talk. Even what had happened as we touched on earlier in the tunnel before the game, it just added everything to the game, and it's a big enough game without any of that. And they came out. And everything they did, they did well. Now, Scotland, we didn't play well in that first half, but no. you've got to credit the way they played as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and certainly, I've always had respect for, for England teams, the way they play. And uh, As I said, uh, they, they were coming out to steamroller us in that game, and, and they certainly done that in the, in the first half. We never had an answer. We, we certainly never helped ourselves, but everything England done, uh, you know, it stuck. You know, talk about you know the past Finchuk in 2018. Like, you know, there were some excellent bits of play there from uh, I think Henry Slade and and boys like that who who were on fire certainly in that first half. And I think you know, in hindsight, England were probably so far in front that actually helped us in the second half. That you know, subconsciously they probably switched off a little bit. You know, even at half time, their message would have been, you know, let's go out and do the same again. But it's so hard to. To recreate that, and I think you know our messages were were stripped back a little bit. Do the basics well, defend together, and uh, you know, and claw our way back into the game. I think one it's, it's the emotional side of that part, isn't it? Like you go in at half time and you're that far in front. Um, not that either of us could maybe talk about it all that much in a Scotland jersey, but when you do get that far ahead and you're sitting at half time, um, to get yourself back to the same emotional level you were at before the game is difficult. But the reverse, from a Scotland point of view, the emotion, the, the, the direction, the drive for that second half, it's almost like we've got nothing to lose. So Scotland can go out there and just, just express himself, as well as having that, that, that top two inches, that extra bit of, uh, of motivation that sometimes is the deciding factor. Yeah, very much so. And I think that's when you need to use emotion. Uh, because sometimes it's dangerous. It can cloud your judgment, cloud your decisions uh, when you're playing. But certainly in a, in a situation like that, it's you know we're not just representing each other. We're representing our country, the jersey, the people that have gone before us. You know, and it's certainly I know everybody in that change room didn't want to be the you know the team that got 60, 70 points stuck on them, uh, twicking them. And so it's about how we stick together as a group. And you know, certainly whether that be myself, you know, obviously it wasn't on the field, but. I felt, you know, I still needed to play a big part in, in making sure we got everybody back in the right headspace before we went out into the second half because there was still 40 minutes of rugby to be played and, and we could still impact the game. And thankfully, everybody that was involved, uh, you know, bought into that and, and we were able to, to claw back. And ultimately, you know, in a game, we, we probably should have won, to be honest. Uh, and again, it's... You know, credit to England, they, they stuck in there and, and they, they managed to, you know, get over the, the line at the end and score that try. Let's look at that second half and the performance elements that came. Um, Scotland just stepped up in every single aspect and to your point around England and the lead that they had, they, they dropped off in a lot of aspects. So it was an incredible, incredible flip. But one that you just, you very, very rarely see. No, you, you, I think you're, you're not going to see too many test matches like that, um, certainly in a, in a Scotland-England game. And I think it was such a big momentum swing in the game and we just almost kept scoring and kept scoring. And I think we scored once, scored twice. And then it was like, oh, you know, we scored twice. We're still a fair bit behind. We'll just keep plugging away. And then it was like we scored again. I was like, you know, crikey me, we're, we're, we're gaining momentum here. And if we score again, we're right back in this. And I remember when we did score and, you know, all us boys were obviously celebrating and coming together and you just felt that energy of the team. And you could almost see it in the England players in their expression. You could see it in their eyes almost that the, the momentum had just gone um, from from where they were in the first half and everything was with us. And they, they started to go to a kicking game and, it's almost like you know, don't lose the game now, rather than you know, going out to win it. Whereas we were going out to win it, so it was such a such a flip in in the, in the two halves. That's what probably made the game so exciting. That's a perfect analogy. England started trying not to lose the game, Scotland out to win it. So talk us through the emotion when the final whistle goes. Because are you disappointed that you've not won that, uh, which seems incredible at thirty-one points to seven down, or are you? 
or is there some part of you that realises that you know it's been a massive game, but we've actually managed to come out with a draw? Yeah, it's you know, it's a tough, tough answer, that, Alan. To be honest, I, I was gutted to 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 give England the, the opportunity even to to come back and, and draw the game um, because I think um, it's such a long time. Um, Nineteen eighty-three, I believe, Scotland did you know, the last time they won down in down in Twickenham, and, and I think to have that. Um, to be part of something like that would have, would have been awesome, and so it was, it was really hard for me to take, especially when I think again it comes back to that side of the game when it, small moments and big test matches, and we probably could have just left the ball and, and one of the rucks we ended up giving a penalty away and letting England get off the field, and it's just in these small moments when we've done extremely well to to get back into the game is is not trying to chase it too hard. And just back our defence, and and we we'll, we we'll let England get a little, little bit of field position, and uh, you know they got over the line. Greg, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure to catch up with you. It's two brilliant games that have been showed this Friday night, and thanks for your thanks for your insight into those games. Absolute pleasure. Cheers, up. edition of the Calcutta Cup. Here are the teams. World Cup preparations front of mind for Eddie Jones. He's rung the changes again. Two of the leading performers against Italy set this one out. Brad Shields gives way to Mark Wilson in the back row. Ben Moon replaces Ellis Genge at loose head. Joe Foken as singer. Man of the match a week ago admitted from the 23. The Exeter duo Henry Slade and Jack Noll are back. Manatu Alangi moves in one to inside centre. Injuries to key players have blighted Gregor Townsend throughout the championship. There's a radical rejig to the Scotland back row with a first start in this Six Nations for Hamish Watson. Ben Toulis replaces Johnny Gray at lock. Into the backs, Ali Price continues at scrum half. With Stuart Hogg and Blair Kinghorn both unavailable, Sean Maitland is picked at full back. Byron McGuigan fills in for Tommy Seymour on the wing. Sam Johnson is back in favour and returns to the midfield. On to the replacements. England scrum half Dan Robson was ruled out on Tuesday. So Ben Spencer becomes the sixth Saracen involved today. Newcastle's Chris Harris is fit again and wears 23 for Scotland. Well, it's been a torrid old campaign for the Scots, Rory. If there is a key area, if there is one thing they have to get right today, if they are to end that long sequence of defeats here, what is it? Martin, I think there's a long list of those, but right at the forefront has to be the physicality. Up front, Scotland have to match England to have any chance. At set piece and defensively, they have to be rock solid. So far in this championship, Scotland have given away too many cheap points and they cannot afford to do that here at headquarters. Well, two of the officials from New Zealand, including the referee, Paul Williams. Oh, 
So the championship is now out of the question for England. They lost that really in a wretched 20 minutes in Cardiff. But what they can do here is to put themselves and set themselves on the right route for Tokyo in that World Cup. And of course, a very distinguished prize, the Calcutta Cup. There's Ali Price, again selected at scrum half, ahead of Greg Laidlaw. Hold here now, White. There is Price, the, uh, the Glasgow team significantly outnumbered at the moment by those from their uh, Scottish rivals, Edinburgh. Tremendous catch at pace there from Billy Vunapola. He yeah, did well, it's a good kick from Ali Price, England in possession though. There's some space here for England, in particular here for Henry Slade, Noel's looking for it, Noel has got it, he steps inside, he's burst through the defence. What a way for the extra wing to return to England action. Out with a shoulder. And after all the stuff about Joe Boca and Asina and what a marvellous game he had last week, there was, in some quarters, some criticism for Noel's inclusion here. I tell you what, he certainly quietened down those particular critics very early indeed. Oh, he's shown his class with the finish, but it was that pass there from Farrell out the back to Elliot Daly that opened up. Slade did well, went to Maitland, pulled in the challenge from Finn Russell, but Noel had understood that the space was on the inside. Look at here, Maitland had to ch overchase. As a result, at the same time, McGuigan overchased. Noel came off his right foot, and by the time Ben Toulis got his hands to him, it was all too late. Noel's over for a score. It's a dream start for England. And an absolute nightmare for the men in blue. Well, let's be honest, that's a habit that England are developing. Scoring early. That coming right at the start of the second minute. going to play a role here but that flew almost dead straight from Owen Farrell yeah we'll just see the finish to the score there Billy Vinopola deserves credit Scotland defensive reads were just poor it was it was a good execution Scotland went for the line speed from outside in as it was Nick Grigg was compromised with the quick hands from Finn Russell and with the pace that England have shown throughout this championship and they've just shown the killer instinct there back in their 20th try. Another catch there coming oh, from yeah. Johnny May. A box kick from Ben Young, the most experienced test player in the England side at the moment. There is Sean Maitland, a slightly unfamiliar position. At fullback, has played there a handful of times for Saracens. Immediately you see the line speed that England looked to put on Finn Russell, understanding the threat he brings. Oh, here, what? No. Use now, please. We'll just be looking here to try and get the ball in the hand here. Here's Johnny May. Always dangerous when he gets a little bit of space. On there from Farrell. Through burst curry. Well, there may have been a little bit of a tap, but he uh, fell over his own feet as much as anything. What an encouraging start this is for England. And then that ball uh, appeared to be lost forward by Ben Moon, who's gone down. Oh. Right. Club off. Yeah. It looks like he's in some discomfort, doesn't he, Ben Moon? I'm not sure if it's just the way he landed, having made that carry on the inside shoulder. We just see the move there. There's that was the pass from Farrell. You see the unders line from Manu Tuolangi he held the inside defender, and from there, Slade did really well. Drew Finn Russell's challenge. The Scottish defence had overchased on the inside, and Noel did really well. This is the killer pass. 
Sam Johnson's dragged in. You see Tuolangi coming on the short line. Out, out of picture, Poole Griggin. And from there, England made it look incredibly easy. They've showed so much class and killer instinct. Their ability, their efficiency with ball in hand has been remarkable. Yes, you could see how Sean Maitland there was signalling so that he could go and cover the, the wing, but then he rather overcommitted himself, didn't he? And it's one of those things, as a blitz defence, you jeopardise a lot if you don't get it right. Here we just see the challenge again. I mean, there, look... Might be a substitution here for what one. Yeah, it looks fairly innocuous, but I think it possibly happens... Yeah, it was Look like all that much, but he's carrying that right arm very heavily, so it's a shame to see Ben Wins afternoon finish so early on. Oh, we're back with the rough diamond combo, as Eddie Jones refers to them. Carl Sinclair on the tight head side, and it's Gage, the Leicester Tiger on the loose head side. I'm not sure whether the, uh, the statistic means much, Rory, but there are actually more players in this England 23 from clubs in the bottom five of the Gallagher Premiership than there are in the top seven at the moment. There's Russell. Here's a little bit of space for Sean Maitland. Eventually taken to ground. That was Henry Slade. There goes Toulis. Toulis preferred to Johnny Gray today. Is Hamish Watson. What a cameo he had last week. 22 minutes. And Russell finds touch. Yeah, and that's respectful play from Scotland. Understanding how good this English defence is. We've seen Ali Price go to the skies on a couple of occasions with the box kick. That one there. Finn Russell. Finding an outcome, there, no understanding the importance of getting some no. field position, particularly yeah, after conceding just a minute yeah, into the you. game, it's really important that Scotland try and get some territory and try and bag some possession in England's half at the same time. The throw there, finally. Safe hands of Joe Launchbury. His youngs. Be interesting to see inside. how Manatulangi goes here in. in the rather narrower 12 channel. Byron McGuigan waits for it. Two sail players playing opposite one another today. McGuigan up against Tom yep, Curry, and there good. is Tom he's Curry. Good. And Curry's oh, turned no. it at the expense of his club mate. Yeah, interesting call there from Paul Williams. I think the steal was made. Interestingly, Curry ended up rolling then on his back, so theoretically he's then off his feet. Does he have to release it? As it is, the scavenging open side, excellent on the ground. Tom Curry did really well. An injury to Sam Underhill for the chance in this championship for Tom Curry. Oh. On the evidence of the first four matches and seven minutes, he's certainly taken it. That's a 50-50 that definitely went England's way there. Interesting, he had his hands on it, but he was off his feet by the time I think he had potentially stolen it. Same combo there, George to Launchbury. Oh. Ben Youngs is giving him the call. Here's yeah. Noel. Okay. Advantage. We'll be playing an advantage here to the men in white. You have the advantage, Noel. Youngs again. Uh, Ford there. Back for the penalty. So we're going to come back for the penalty. Yeah. Number 10. He just saw Finn Russell there, I think it was, and Stuart McAnally coming offside off the back of the ruck. Yeah. And just pushing that line speed. Here's an interesting call. Get a score a minute in, seven points up, and there's a message of intent. If ever you needed one. Back, the line there, guys. It's not necessarily a criticism, Rory, but England not showing an awful lot of respect for the men in blue. They've gone short to Vunapola, and here's the drive. 
And they've got it down. Well, he was the try scorer in Wales in defeat. And on the evidence of this, he's more likely to be the try scorer in the pursuit of victory. Tom Curry. There's one for Steve Borthwick off the set piece. Look at the simplicity of this. Hit Billy Vinopola, 130 kilo anchor on the ground. Have two two forwards bind around him and just drive onto him. And you just see it's an eight-man effort. Tom Curry on the ball. And it's just so simple from Ed from England. Efficiency at its very best. Execution from the line out. And England stretch their lead and it's looking ominous. Even we're not even ten minutes in and Scotland are two tries down. Well a rehearse move, make a note of that for the World Cup. It worked utterly flawlessly here. Well, the Rugby Football Union were making all sorts of plans about preparing for high winds and one or two logistical changes outside the ground. Inside it, Owen Farrell is kicking as if there's barely a breath. That was as clean a strike as you will ever see. We had a beautiful view of it, and it was a, a kick of beauty. And a miscue from the restart from Finn Russell. Elliot Daly firing the ball into touch. Yep, yours is here. I'd love to hear the, the messages that are being sent down from no. the coach's box at the moment for Scotland. A hugely disappointing start for Gregor Townsend's side. And that line out going against the throw as well of Stuart McAnally, the captain. Hold wide, two! Thank you. Tester for Maitland. Did well. There's Ali Price. On to Finn Russell. Here's Johnson. Started the first three matches. Dropped for the last one, but now recalled. Lost now. And there was Curry oh. again. Leave it white. Leave it. But Scotland do have it. Here's Grigg. Rather a stationary target for Joe Launchbury. Russell looking for space. And he finds it, but it's on the wrong side of the white line. Play. And that's defensive pressure from England who have gone quick at the line out. And Russell looking to atone here, trying to take on Johnny May. May taking him down around the ankles. Oh, yeah. Okay. Not yet 12 minutes gone. England leading by 14 points to nil. A little bit of rain falling at Twickenham. I don't think we get a, a real appreciation up here in the West Stand of the, the wind down at pitch level, but it's certainly blustery and kicking's playing a big part so far in, in this first half. The appreciation we do get though, Rory, is the fact that we're well under cover, but we're still getting a little bit wet. And that was a crunching hit from Johnson, who's a bit slow to get up there on Mano Tuolangi. Here's Ellis Gensch. Just buffeting off the defenders and getting the offload of Carl Sinclair. Well, he's like a human dump truck, is Sinclair. Here's launch free. Launch free with a dummy. It is yet another try from England. They are rampant. Wow. Joe launch free on the end of the attack to finish it off. But it highlights the fact that he had time to pull off a dummy. But look at this here. 
great tackle from Sam Johnson on Manu Tuolangi. And it gave Stuart Man McAnally a chance, but the ball came out to Genge, left-footed step, bump, offload there to Sinclair, who a sensational line from there. This is just simple. Ben Young's in there so quickly, looks up, ball across the front. Here we are again, Sinclair. He was going nowhere but over the top of Maitland, and the speed of ball was so quick that Launchbury across the front had the chance to dummy and glide through. He'll rarely score an easier try than that and right now England are looking like world beaters Scotland's defence is looking so porous well Joe Lo Launchbury there demonstrating that this England side has the all court skills Wind, what wind? Owen Farrell takes his Six Nations tally for England up to 397 over the course of his career. Well, Martin, I sense coming into this game that there was a, a fair bit of edge and a few scars that were maybe just hadn't quite healed from Murrayfield last year. Hearing some of the words being said by coaches and players this week, but the intent that England have shown in this opening 15 minutes has been unbelievable. And Scotland haven't even been a close second best so far. Yeah, Scotland finished third in the championship last year. No doubt the highlight was that stunning Calcutta Cup victory up at Murrayfield. You're here. Yeah, I'll stand on the middle. I'll give you your mark. Well, I saw a pre-match interview with Gregor Townsend and he was asked about the fact that he had so many injuries to deal with. 37 players have been involved in Scotland's campaign in this Six Nations so far. He was uh, keen not to blame anything, but it's hard to imagine how it really could have gone any worse. Yeah, with regards to injuries, it's been really brutal for Scotland. Having said that, I do feel that a number of the players who have been given the opportunity either with their their own fitness or with the, the injuries to others, have, have underperformed. And as Scots, you can't deny that you lose a world-class operator like Stuart Hogg, you, you lose Hugh Jones, you continue without Duncan Taylor. Guys like Ryan Wilson, John Barclay, there's a, there's a long, long list of, of players missing, um, which Scotland have always struggled with because the depth with only two professional sides and then the, the handful of players playing outside of Scotland is always going to be a challenge. But for me, the performances haven't been where they need to be. Italy in the first game was decent for 40 minutes. The, the second game against Ireland, OK for 40 minutes, but that was an opportunity that got away. France was another opportunity that got away. And Wales in round four was one that arguably Scotland could have and should have won. So... Scotland come to Twickenham, having only won one game, hugely frustrated, incredibly disappointed with the campaign so far. And certainly the way things have gone in this um, opening 17 minutes doesn't look to have improved any. Here's Maitland just going across field. He was a straightforward target there for Slay. That's the halfway line, in from Ali Price. Oh. Bradbury there. That was Grant Kilchrist, tallest man on the pitch at six foot seven. That's about two meters in the metric measures. Alan Dell goes back. There's Mark Wilson scooping it up for Sinclair. On there from two Alangi. It's on again. There are plenty of white jerseys out wide, aren't there? Here goes Henry Slade. Little chip inside was meant for Johnny May. sure Johnny May needed to come inside there or either that or I think Henry Slade should have potentially straightened it was on but the camera's on George Cruz because look at this here him chasing down Finn Russell Finn Russell had Sinclair in front of him thinking that he was the defender that he was at most at risk being hit by and Cruz came from nowhere and 
smashed Russell and dislodged that ball and offered England the turnover. What well, Scotland are struggling with so far, they've lost a couple of lineouts, they've lost possession again there, they just cannot get a hold and keep a hold of possession at the moment. No problems with that line out. Leave, leave, leave. They go. Scotland really go. just looking for some respite. You're too late. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. No thanks. Johnny May, very solid under the high ball. Away. There's Youngs. Ali Price snatching that from the grasp of Ben Youngs. And Sam Skinner standing over the ball. Skinner, who played for England in a World Rugby under 20 final. Same team as Ellis Genge, would you believe, four years ago. There goes McGuigan. Don't pull out of it. And to Willem Nell, the man from the Northern Cape of South Africa. Johnson. Another tackle there to the count for Mark Wilson. Look at the effort Scotland have to put in to try and get any form of go-forward ball. England's defensive line speed suffocating them, and Scotland are lacking someone like a Billy Vinopola to actually just That's give them off. front foot ball when it's not there on a the plate. Well, this has rather been laid on a plate for Elliot Daly, and that was superb out of the back of the hand to No. No chips it ahead. Can he get all? Oh, there was a Scottish hand, but that may well be the telling touch. Well, it's a couple of years since Ben Young's scored a test match try. Right at the start of the 2017 Six Nations campaign, he may well have ended that long dry spell. Yes, Paul. Okay, mate, so on field decision is try. We've got a ground in here. We just want to make sure there wasn't any little knock on in the lead up, please, mate. Checking footage, just the last component where the ball has been grounded on field decision try. The television match official is Ben Skeen, getting the instructions there from his compatriot. Ben Young didn't look convinced when he first got up that it had definitely been a score, and I think it does. It does that glance off his right hand? I think the ball flight possibly changes. He does get it down second time with that left hand, but I think the first one it, here. Watch his right hand here. For me, I think that's his right hand that knocks it, guides it out towards the right. I guess the only thing in his favour is that it has to be clear and obvious. I am inclined to agree with you. Well, there it is. There, Thank that's, you. that's as clear and obvious as you can get, surely. Paul, you need to reverse your on-field decision. White has knocked the ball on. Yeah. Blue scrum. I agree. Clear knock on. Well, there may not be no many time. among the 80,000 no here who agree with you. Knock on. But Rory, you and Ben Skeen, the television match official, on the same wavelength. Strictly neutral, only saying what I see, Martin. That was... Um, I, I felt that when Ben Young's... Often a player's reaction uh, does tell you an awful lot. And But look at this, there's a bit of skill there. Elliot Daly between two defenders. Naughty ball out the back door. And Noel understood... There it is. Left footed step, now in the loads of space, understood where Youngs was. Really nice little clip down the touchline, and it gave the opportunity. Scotland still, the pressure on. That, that, that was almost a bonus point with only a quarter of the game gone for England. Boy, they've been good in the championship in the opening 20 minutes. I guess the question might be, in hindsight, might Jack Noel have been better with a little soft pass holding it up? I'm certain, sure he'll look at that in a review session. I'm sure Ben Youngs would have rather that than had a foot race with Ali Price for that score in the corner. He had uh, made himself available there, Ben Youngs, running as fast as you will ever see him. 
To loop round behind Jack Noel. 21 minutes gone. England, 21 points in front. Price. That was a super touch, but Jack Noel is off and running. Here goes Elliot Daly. The wheels on Elliot Daly just compromises defenders. Bunapola on there to Farrell. Bursting through again is Noel. He has made quite an impact on this match. Farrell took three grabs at it. On there to Curry. It might still work though for England. Here's Sinclair. was Genge. Oh. Yeah, ball's there. Off six. That was your man. There's Youngs. On there to Farrell. The pop pass there to Johnny May. Looked rather flat. May sound like a bit of a euphemism, but it satisfied the referee. No, don't put him in. Don't put him in there. Don't hold him there, too. Here's Farrell. Noel at pace. That was a well-timed break. Well snuffed out, though, by the Scots. Here goes Jamie George. Youngs. Yeah, no, no, no. In the tackle. It's a knock-on advantage. Referee playing an advantage here advantage for the knock-on. Change of direction from Henry Slade. Farrell on to Noel. Look at May, he's desperate for the board out there on the left flank. Here is May. OK, the advantage is over. Referee says the advantage for the knock-on knock is over. Here goes Jamie George. England up to now, this will be the 15th phase. Slade. Genge. Another good tackle there from Sam Johnson. Vunapola. Hamish Watson apprehending him. No. And it's a penalty to England. It must be a clear release first before you go on the ball. And you guys need a roll. Yeah. Well, we've been talking about the uh, problems with the winds here in southwest London. In fact, throughout the country over the course of the last week, we understand that you might have been experiencing a bit of picture breakup. I apologize for that, but please understand. I am told by higher powers that really it's been delivered by higher powers. It's entirely down to the weather. Yeah, and here's the penalty against Hamish, Hamish Watson, who thought that he was in the fight on the ground there. You can see he had his hands on it. But Paul Williams suggesting that there wasn't a clear release in there or that the rock had formed. That's something whereby the Northern Hemisphere referees, and I spoke to Glenn Jackson a couple of weeks ago about this, the Kiwi, he says that the Southern Hemisphere referees referee things differently. Up here in the Northern Hemisphere, a lot of the time the referees talk players through it, so they'd say, release, release our hands off. On that occasion there, the first time that Hamish Watson knew he was going to be penalised was when the whistle blew. England up to 24, a landmark for Owen Farrell. 400 points in his Six Nations career. And he's just been able to pull the strings so far this afternoon, hasn't he? He's had front foot ball. Really interesting to see the work rate of Johnny May and that man Jack Nowell off their wings, just popping up in the midfield up against front five forwards. And as soon as these big men see the quick feet of those guys, it's... You know, it's the danger zone that they understand they're in, they're, they feel really vulnerable. Well, to draw one or two comparisons, the last time Scotland were here, two years ago, England no, put nine. 61 points nine. on them, they did score 21 of the road. Here goes Jamie George. But it's certainly been a very sobering opening 20 minutes for the Scots. Really is quite the antithesis of that marvellous match 12 months ago at Murrayfield. Oh, yeah, good timing, thank you. 
on the one for Maitland. You can see the, the way Maitland was moving under that. The ball must have been wobbling in the air. That's the carry from Magnus Bradbury, who's impressed since coming back from injury. There goes McAnally getting the offload away. That's to Alan Dell. You got the advantage, light tackle. Do we get a number there, Gord? He's playing an advantage here to the Scots. There goes Sam got Skinner. The advantage, nine. advantage for the late tackle. Gilchrist. Hold that mark for his boss. Ali Price. Russell. The chip right, over the back. top. And that goes to Elliot Daly. And the referee will come back no advantage. for the Scotland penalty. Coming back. Late tackle. 17 wide. It's a kick to nothing for Finn Russell, but that man Ellis Genge there just taking things a little bit too far. You see Ali Price there gets to pass away. Genge has sold Late himself. Tackle, He's dropped watts. his head, dropped his eyes. Late tackle. And just followed through on it. Yeah, the ball, the ball's well away. It's yeah, he, you could actually see him cursing himself as he as he spun out of it, understanding that he knew that he had just slightly mistimed it. It's the first real opportunity that Scotland have had to have a penalty and drive themselves into England's half and have a set piece of their own. Finn Russell often goes to bite off a lot. He's found a really good kick there, and Scotland finally have a, a set piece play inside the 22. And really important as the clock ticks towards 30 minutes that Scotland come away from this attack with something. The territory stats showing that. Only 17% of the play has been inside England's half, and the scoreboard certainly suggests that England have been ruthless. Oh, well, that almost set up there for Byron McGuigan. Chance and maybe the counter here for England. Here goes Johnny May. He's got support outside here from Daly. Daly cuts in field. Jamie George is following it up, but it is snapped up by Darcy Graham. Maitland on here to Tulis. Price. Slipping behind Villanelle. And here goes Magnus Bradbury. Turnover's good. Five! Five! Penalty to England. Tom Curry again. And Ben Young has gone quickly as well. Oh, and the space out wide. Slade inside to Johnny May. It's yet another one for the Leicester wing. One try against Ireland, a hat-trick against France. He picked one up against Italy last weekend. And now he's opened his account against the Scots. How unselfish is this from Henry, Henry Slade? Look at this, he, he could have run that in instead. He understands Ali Price is charging across. Johnny May is in for his sixth try of the championship. Look at the sleight of hand here, though. There you go, son. You finish it off. Have another one. The easiest of run-ins for Johnny May. Quick thinking from Ben Youngs. But that come back to Ben, to, to Tom Curry. It was Tom Curry's cur turnover that gave England the penalty opportunity. And from there, just the quick thinking from Ben Youngs. Beautiful sleight of hand by Henry Slade. And it's just all too easy for England right now. It's not a dissimilar story to the opening half hour against the French. On that occasion in the second half, though, the men in white rather took their foot off the French windpipe. I do wonder if we look back at the history in this fixture, and maybe they might just have incurred the wrath of Mr Jones a little in the aftermath of that France game. I strongly suspect there will be no repeat here. This promises to be a full 80-minute performance from England. England into the 30s. Here you go again. I, I was interested there. I thought they should have looked at that challenge on Sam Johnson from Manu Tuolangi. But you look at that, 95 metres later, England are under the posts and extend their lead by another seven points. I did think when I first saw it that Sam, the challenge on Sam Johnson was a bit high, was going to ground. But again, the efficiency of this English attack really cutthroat. 
Cruz taking the restart. There's Youngs, Farrell. Oh, boy. Curry. Hold there, White. All on now. That's one for me to chase. Backwards off White. Play on. Nick Rigged is who does the mopping up. Gilchrist. Russell. And there's Bradbury. Another tackle there from Tom Curry. Here's Toulis. They'll chip over the top, meant for Byron McGuigan, palm back. Here goes Farrell. Elliot Daly off and running. No, shown the touchline, takes the inter invitation. Hamish Watson. Well, he showed plenty of cool there, did the Edinburgh loose forward. And Finn Russell hoofs it into touch, but once again, the back three cutting right. loose. First Elliot Durley, then Jack Knoll. There just seems to be space everywhere, and so often the case that you see an English powerhouse back with a pace, identifying a, a, for, a Scottish forward in front of them and exposing it. Tom Curry. Oh, that was go. meant for Jamie George. Knock on, and Sevens in front. And Tom Curry finding himself in an offside, offside position. And that's the first unforced error that I remember for a long time in this opening 33 minutes made by England. And it's brief relief for Scotland. This is again, we're just seeing the finish to this bonus point try me. for England. What a championship Johnny Mays had. He will surely be in the contenders for player of the championship in my Gloucester days and I always was aware he had the pace but, and a lot's been made of his personality but my goodness he's the ultimate professional and he's shown his capabilities so far this year yes he certainly had a reputation of being something of a character in the team room I understand not always the greatest listener but he's certainly been listening a lot more recently yeah, he suggested there was a chicken hiding in his body that, that guided him, so I don't know how he's managed to get rid of it, but um, yeah, good I don't know what he's replaced you. it with either. I don't think he's all there, but he's certainly got some athletic ability. He certainly has that. Started off as a pole vaulter. Here goes Sam Skinner. McAnally. Russell. Okay. Picked up by England. Over. Another tackle coming in from Tom Curry. There's Henry Slade. Oh, oh that was brilliant from Curry. Well grabbed by Cruz. There's May. Barrel, but it's been charged out. And it's the captain, McAnally, who's away. Oh, he's been missed by May. This is a tremendous break. Well, Stuart McAnally has played a captain's innings just when it was required. And it seemed like it would take something like that for Scotland to break this English defence. And it actually came from a turnover. There's Curry again, putting that defensive pressure on WP now. And here it is, the charge down, McAnally did brilliantly to get it, but more so to regather. Watch this here, picks it up off his shins, puts on the afterburners, tucks it under his left hand, understanding there might be a fend. It's a missed tackle by Johnny May, who surely could have run alongside him and got him down, but McAnally showed the pace to get away from Farrell as well. And I tell you what, the captain of Scotland will not stop fighting for as long as he's on the field there it's narrowed the gap slightly but it's a big score for scotland 
Well, they do get seven points back. It's been quite an opening 36 minutes at Twickenham. Well, the first time I saw Stuart McAnally play, he was a rather swift back row forward. He's now an even quicker hooker. Yeah, he's had to change his, his body shape a little bit. Both he and Fraser Brown are both converted back rowers. By that time there, he did show the pace. He's a powerful, powerful man. Incredibly proud to lead his country. Do Scotland believe they can win this game? I'm still not convinced. But they've narrowed the gap. And they'll be looking to build on that score now in the final moments of this half. there from Magnus Bradbury. The Scotland pack, dominated by players from Edinburgh who've had such a wonderful season. And still with plenty more to come under the watchful eye of their English coach, Richard Cockerell. Uh, don't, don't push it into him. Don't push it into him. The ball's there to play. Hi. Sam Skinner is actually the only non-Edinburgh player in the Scotland pack today. Taken back inside the 22. Ball taken back yeah, into back the 22, go. so an error from Ali Price. Let's go! But once again, the point you made about being coached by Northern Hemisphere referees, he probably would have been coached there took had it, it been a it Northern back, Hemisphere yeah. coach, not by Paul Williams. Yes, yeah, a very different approach. Um, and my chat with Glenn Jackson definitely opened my eyes up to it. And he said before he refereed Italy Ireland that he had changed the way that he had refereed a little bit. This is Paul Williams' debut in the Six Nations as a referee. So it's a really different challenge. He's obviously refereeing very similarly to how he does in Super Rugby. He has refereed Scotland twice before, but this is his first Six Nations game. And it's certainly not a criticism on our part, it is just a different interpretation of the role of the referee. Stay bound! Yep. Here goes Ben Youngs. Missing out Farrell, taken by Elliot Daly. Nick Grigg getting him around the bootlaces. Here goes Jack Noel. Okay, thank you. Last two minutes of what has been a frenetic first 40. Another carry there from Tom Curry. Manitoulangi having to bend his back okay, for that one. VP Nell with the tackle. Easy. Sinclair finding himself out in the midfield. Jamie George. Slade, super pass. Yeah. Advantage it's another the crucial tackle, exactly. Sam Johnson the has done wonderfully the well. They've been stretched in the midfield. The time yeah, again, there, Sam Johnson there. has met that challenge. Oh, there. Got the advantage for a tackle off the ball. The referee was playing an advantage there for a tackle off the ball. Yeah, yeah, got it. How big a statement do England yeah. want to make now? A minute to go. Tackle off the ball. A comfortable lead of 24 points. Do they go for the corner here and look to the finish the half Take exactly the as they started it? Number four. Off the ball. Ben Tulis, the guilty party. Well, the call made by Owen Farrell meets the approval. Well, it certainly does. Sure. And you see the tackle there as Ben Toulis on Tom Curry. Has followed up by another great tackle as you picked up on Martin oh, by Sam Johnson. He's chucked himself around all too often though. It's been the movement game of England, the power game that has compromised this Scotland we'll, defence we'll in the in first half. We'll Can Scotland hold One them out, out in the final play? It's there with Jamie George. Now, can they get the choreography right? Look at Jack Noel it's joining in. White. It's been taken White down, but the referee down. says that it's England who've taken them all down. The ball's available. There it is for Ben Young. Thank you. Now we go, balls! 
No hands. Oh. There's the Leicester scrum half again. Look at them waiting. Here goes launch free. One try already for launch free. Sinclair getting caught. Brave tackle there from Finn Russell. Still England ball though. This will be the final play of the half. Elliot Daly the step. Yeah, fair enough. Well done, Darcy Graham. He was on the ball and it was a second go. He's had to watch a lot of traffic it. come down his wing. Oh, and there's not a lot of possessions gone his way. But he's won Scotland that penalty that will see them into half time, 31 7 down. But I guess it sums up this first half to say that it could have it could have been worse. Well, Finn Russell doesn't find touch. The pass there from Elliot Daly. There's Henry Slade. Jack Noel just skipping through the defenders. He doesn't make things easy, Finn Russell, does he? Gotcha. Picked up on the half volley, that worked. Here's George Cruz. No wants it, he's got some space. Steps inside Darcy Graham. Offloading to George Cruz. Well, he was stripped oh, by his Saracens teammate, Sean Maitland. Not and Scotland, I'm sure, will just look to get the ball into touch. <laughs> and the prize it is who follows the advice. And what an opening 40 to this finale of the 2019 Guinness Six Nations. Joe Launchbury among the try scorers. England already have a try bonus point. Scotland have been on the rack. Half time, England leading Scotland by 31 points to seven. We all want to protect ourselves and our loved ones against coronavirus. And one of the best ways to do this is to keep washing our hands. Make sure you wash thoroughly and often with soap and water for 20 seconds, particularly when you get home. Use hand sanitizer if there's no soap and water available. By doing this, you will reduce the risk of catching and spreading the virus. Secondly, try and avoid touching your face, especially your eyes, nose and mouth. These are two of the best ways we can prevent infection, stop the virus and save lives. So I'm no longer playing for the Scottish national side, but thanks to BT and Scottish Rugby, I'm able to virtually rejoin Scotland national session during the Guinness Six Nations. Let's start with some basic attacking play. Oh, that's weird. It's good that I don't like heights, right? <laughs> Expect you Jones to throw in a switch. <laughs> that's very lifelike. It's a little bit unnerving to start with, and they and they actually understand that you can look around and stuff. But it's yeah, it's a very a very unusual experience, but really fascinating to be part of that. Get ready to go in the whistle. A rugby club is more than 15 players on the field. It's about a life better spent. 
A community mucking in together out of love for the local game. From kicking tees to cups of tea. Protecting the future of the game, making the stars of tomorrow. Royal Bank Rugby Force makes rugby life even better. We'll support over 75% of all qualifying clubs this season with tools, funding and expertise. Make sure your club is one of them. To apply, search Royal Bank Rugby Force and get started today. As we face uncertain times, we are certain of this. We are a country that looks out for each other. Older people, those at risk, the self-isolating. They're our family, our friends, our neighbours, the folk that live upstairs. Shopping, prescriptions, taking out bins. Lending a hand means everyone wins. Even a wee phone for a natter lets people know they matter. Through a million acts of kindness, we'll show that we are Scotland. If you are fit and well, find out how to help safely at readyscotland.org. And they trail the men in white who have a certain spring in their stride by 31 points to 7. Well, Scotland conceded 61 points in this fixture two years ago. And I guess, Rory, if we look at some of the statistics, Scotland forced into making well in excess of 100 tackles in that first 40 minutes yet they still conceded four tries. Yeah, absolutely, and, and with the ball as well, Scotland made zero line breaks. Obviously, the one try that, that fell to Stuart McAnally came off the back of a charge down, so really important words in both half-time change rooms. White, happy. So Finn Russell gets us back underway. Here's Jack Knoll. The man has scored the first try very early on in that second minute. Here's Ben Youngs. On to Billy Vunapola. No changes made by either side going into this second 40. Jamie George, you can see there, standing out on the flank. Ball being palmed back, and that's uh, Carl Sinclair. They've got a fist to it. Here's Elliot Daly. Sweeping back there is Finn Russell. Thanks a lot. Yeah, that's a good net gain from that big left boot of Elliot Daly. We'd have loved to have been in both yeah. changing rooms at half-time to hear the words of Eddie Jones. I have no doubt at all that he would have said, we've got our hand on the throat here, suffocate Scotland and put them to bed. For Gregor Townsend, very much a damage limitation job. Well, that time, Manitou Lange bursting through. It was the Scotland captain who was sent spinning to the turf, Stuart McAnally, the try-scorer for Scotland in the first 40. That was Jamie George. Here's George. DP Nell with a tackle. Farrell fires it. That was Mark Wilson, Newcastle's representative in this England side. Elliot Daly, there is space now for Johnny May. presents it Gilchrist was through swiftly Scotland have turned it over hold there blue five hold hold Russell changes the direction a long canter back for the England fullback Elliot Daly there making his 12th straight start at fullback for England today the sequence which started on the tour of South Africa last summer last summer if you're uh, seeing it through the 
the lens of somebody from the Northern Hemisphere. Middle of June, middle of winter it was in South Africa. Elliot Daly just showing his class again with the clearance. He's really nailed down that 15 jersey, hasn't he, coming into this championship. It was a very close call between he and Mike Brown. He just brings an extra dynamism and athleticism to that role, albeit you maybe give a little bit away when it comes to the high ball diffusion. Yeah, I guess there were one or two people asking questions about him in that defeat in Wales, and I suppose that is when you expect him to be tested in tight matches when England spend quite a bit of time on the back foot that final 20 minutes of that match in Cardiff will be looked at very closely by England it's the only thing Lost. that stopped Lost. this afternoon being their Grand Slam opportunity there's Ellis Genge came on very early for Ben Moon reports on Ben Moon by the way he has damaged a shoulder quite how badly we'll see over the course of the weekend. Here is Daly. Mark, Just was... over the shoulder there of uh, Magnus Bradbury, but the bounce wasn't the bounce that Daly was looking for. And it's gone dead, so we'll be all the way back for a scrum. Yeah. From where scrum back, the boys. Wolves full back kick that. It's typical, isn't it, as well? I just bigged him up and he just overcooked that one a little bit. But just thinking at half time here yeah, about the differing psychologies in the changing room at half time, and for Scotland, 24 points down oh, at half time. Time off. Even the biggest optimist in that changing room understands the challenge of, you know, scoring four unanswered, unanswered tries to for Scotland to be able to close the gap. So for Scotland, it is so much about. Getting some pride back into this this jersey. That first half performance was poor. The defence was poor. There wasn't an edge. There wasn't the energy that Gregor Townsend would have liked. On the flip side, I've got no doubt Eddie Jones will want to see his side's side of the scoreboard ticking up into the 40s, into the 50s, and dare I say into the 60s. Well, there we see an example of the all-court game of Johnny May, which is another example of how he's broadened his skill base. He certainly has. He is an unbelievable athlete. He must be one of the, the fastest players, if not the fastest player in world rugby. But he's developed his game, and it's always been something. The high ball has been something he hasn't always been great under. He's not been a great kicker of the ball purely because he al he's always backed his speed. And remember, when he first broke through into the England squad a couple of years ago, he was lambasted for running across the field, getting away from a defender, running towards another one, getting away from another, rather than running forward. Now you just see the pace, but also the space that some of the runners we saw in the first half, the likes of Ellis Genge coming off the bench, let's, Kyle Sinclair, Jack the Nowell. Tom early. Curry, Billy Vinopola, the front the football way. they provide, Johnny May just absolutely relishes being on the end of. Just confirmation of the change being made there by Scotland, the stoppage caused by an injury to Alan Dell, who has left the field. And here comes Gordon Reid, so one current London Irish player, replacing one who's heading that way at the end of the season. Ali Price there with the put in. Here's Russell. Nick Grigg taking it into the contact. There's Murray again. Or Curry, I should say, being supported by Bunapola. Here's Ben Tulis. Darcy Graham. Graham has scored yeah, leave him now. a try in defeat last weekend against Wales. It's Hamish Watson. No repeat so no, far not of his heroics coming off the bench last week against Wales when he beat 10 Wales defenders in just 
20 odd minutes on the pitch. Through goes Sam Johnson. Johnson with the offload of Price. Here's Maitland. He presents it for the scrum half. Out wide of Darcy Graham. And Graham has got there. Well, you have to say it. The Scots have got some fight in them. And that man, Darcy Graham, there is no man in that blue jersey this afternoon who has more fight in them. But it was beautiful rugby here from Scotland. Look at the intricacy of the play between four or five of the backs. Ali Price out the back to Finn Russell, inside to Johnson. He got his hands free to Price, quick hands to Maitland. And then from there, Price initially straight in at the base. It looked like Darcy Graham still had a lot to do when Sam Skinner gave him the ball early, but he stepped inside Nowell, got beyond Genge and dived over for his second try in a Scottish jersey in two weeks. Scotland bounced back and Gregor Townsend will be delighted to see the way that his side have reacted because that's the first time that they've managed to put together five, six phases of meaningful attack whereby Ali Price is getting quick ball, putting guys through half gaps, Hamish Watson fought through the tackle and they get the five-pointer. Well, it's possible that Darcy Graham is only getting his opportunity or has got his opportunity over the last two weekends because of injuries to the likes of Stuart Hogg, Blair Kinghorn, Tommy Seymour, but he really has taken it with both hands. That was quite brilliant. Well deserved. Darcy Graham, he has stepped up and shown Sean Maitland and Tommy Seymour and his opportunities that there is a new kid on the block and they're going to have to be on their metal to stay selected towards the World Cup. When you consider the injuries that Scotland have suffered in the back row, the likes of Magnus Bradbury, who was rushed back into action, missed several months because of injury. Oh, well, was that uh, just a hint of a knock-on? It was from Sam Johnson. And here's Ben Youngs on to George Cruz. Youngs again. Farrell pumps it high. Referee says the advantage is over. Finn Russell gathered with the big bear-like arms of Carl Sinclair. Gilchrist. The chip over the top from Price. Price has got it. This is what Price delivers to this Scotland side. There's the support from Bradbury. Perhaps this fight back has real meaning. From nowhere, Gregor Townsend not showing any emotion at all. But from absolutely nowhere, Scotland have managed to put together two killer plays in three or four minutes. And it came from Ali Price. It was genius. He looked up and saw that there wasn't a sweeper. Ben Youngs was in the front line. Here we go. Look at this. Chips over the top. Gets away from Billy Vunapola and steps inside. But look at this line from Bradbury. On the inside there, full tilt. Nobody can catch him. It's a great line, but that one, take a bow, Ali Price. Creating something out of nothing. Scotland have 12 points in the space of three minutes. They've narrowed the gap. Shown that they've got ability to bounce back. And Eddie Jones will not be happy. Well, the deficit is now just 12, and Magnus Bradbury I was making the point, I didn't quite finish it off, he missed several months because of injury. Reappeared for Edinburgh at the end of January, it was a man of the match performance against the Dragons in the Pro 14. And it was a timely return with so many players getting injured. The likes of John Barkley, who's played no part at all in this campaign. And the long list of injuries in that back row, but Bradbury, another player who sees the opportunity. Yeah, and I'd argue he's playing out of position this afternoon as well, more, more accustomed to playing in the number six jersey. Yep. 
Now they have to be mindful. Here's Hamish Watson being hunted down by Henry Slade. Now there is urgency from the men in white. Oh, yeah. Get your timing right. Rice clears the danger. England are off and running, though, Amiji. Here's Farrell. May with a great step. Nick Grigg rather overcommitting himself. Here's Youngs. On here to Jamie George. Tries to bustle his way through Ellie Price. Billy Vunapola. Well, it's taken 52 minutes, but we do now have a proper contest. There was just a sense that this was becoming a ritual slaughter. Here goes Tuolangi. Taken down the offload onto Mark Wilson. They're five metres out of England. It's a real test of their mettle. Genge getting caught. Put down by Vunapola and it went forward. And now is it England who are making the mistakes? Well, that was a definitely a missed opportunity there. There are some tired bodies out on the field already. You see there the ball from Farrell out the back, lovely hands by Slade. Tuolangi busting through, and I thought Mark Wilson might have been able to make it. Desperate Scottish defence, but it was a desperate line speed jamming in from, I think it was possibly Nick Grigg, that forced a little error when Genge looked to offload to Billy Vunapola in the outside channel. Yeah, there it is, Nick Grigg. Just did enough, Billy Vunapola not managing to pick that one up. And you've just seen Scotland grow in belief. There's still two scores in this match, and they're still inside their 22, but you can just see the confidence that two quick scores has given them. What a tackle that was from Byron McGuigan on Mano Tuolangi, a man who really is the classic international rugby eclectic mix, born in Namibia. Went to school in Cape Town. Yeah, first man. Playing his international rugby for Scotland. His league rugby in England for sale. It's a good exit set by Scotland there. Good carry by Bradbury initially. And I thought for a second again, Tom Curry might have managed to snaffle it at the base. But quick 9-10 from Ali Price to Finn Russell. And Russell finds a really good outcome there. You look at the level of tackles that Scotland have had to make, 147. I'm amazed there's only 17 being missed so far. Well, there has to come a point, rather like a heavyweight contest in boxing. Oh. You throw so many punches at some point, and you take so many punches, you have to get tired. Here's space for May. Owen Farrell was calling for it, but he wasn't found. There goes Mark Wilson. Ball so quick for England. Tuolangi, Slade. I do wonder if the message was coming from the side of the pitch. England, you're getting a little complacent. They're not looking complacent now. Here's Tom Curry. Scotland can get the next score, Five. almost any score what it would really do to this match, and there's Byron McGuigan. One pass too many there from the men in white. Oh, We've yeah. still got 25 minutes to go. Russell, onto Greek. Almost through, important tackle there coming from Tuolangi. Ali Price sniping again onto Gilchrist. That's the halfway line you can see. Rig is down, holding an ankle. Here goes Hamish Watson. Curry stripping the ball, but illegally. Yeah, and these are big made. decisions as well. It's the right lose. decision for me by Paul Williams, the yep. New Zealander, on the whistle this afternoon. It's the tackle was Go complete, on. and then the strip came afterwards. I was about to say the importance of the impact from the bench and Scotland having defended for so much of this game so far look like they're about to unleash five of the men from the bench well interesting calls 
Greg Laid Law is on, Fraser Brown is on, Johnny Gray is on, Josh Strauss is coming on. Time is off. Particularly the call which catches the eye there is the yeah, one at scrum half when you consider the role of Ali Price in the last five minutes. Does that surprise you? It does a little bit, I have to say. I think he's been really energetic and, you know, the entire try for Bradbury came down to just Ali right, Price's right, right. little bit of genius and Time tempo. Just hold him. At the same time, it did look Substance. like he was starting yeah, to tire. He's put in a lot of work in the 56 minutes so far. Greg Laidlaw will bring extra energy. He'll now take over the captaincy as well, with Stuart McAnally having given way. Really important that Gregor Townsend sees an impact from this bench. 18, 18, Another alteration, Chris Harris has replaced Nick Grigg, who's hovered off with that ankle. Here's Fraser Brown with the ball. There's a penalty advantage here to Scotland. Here's Harris, on there to Russell. The space now is a potential 2-1-1, on one. and it's going to be in the corner, and they've got there! Darcy Graham, his second try in this second half. Who would have thought it? Not me, Martin, not me. This is unbelievable. Scotland have just found three more gears since half-time. Darcy Graham on the end. Watch this from Finn Russell. Look at that pass. Memories of Murrayfield over 12 months ago with a pass to hey, Hugh Jones. On that occasion, it was Sean Mayland. And off the back of it, Darcy Graham has another run-in on the outside shoulder of Elliot Daly. Dots it down. Scotland closed the gap further. And we've now got a one-score game. How did this happen? You could not have read this at half-time. And he even had the presence of mind to take the ball four and a half, five metres infield. And that does just make the task that little bit easier for the now Scotland captain, the Scotland leader again. Well, he's just hooked that across the face. But they are now separated by just a converted try. And you see the pass that beats Johnny May. Johnny May is able to make the tackle, but by then Sean Maitland's compromised him on the outside shoulder. Elliot Daly's had to hold just for that extra half second. And Darcy Graham dots down. The Hoik boy in for his brace this afternoon. By goodness, we've got a game in our hands. Well, it slipped through the grass there of Magnus Bradbury. But that man Darcy Graham on hand. And we've still got 21 minutes to go. What appeared to be a stroll down by the side of the Thames in southwest London is turning out to be a minor classic. Really important, Scotland just consolidate now. They... Yeah, yeah. Oh, in goes Russell, and he's away! And all of a sudden, we're going to be level. England are imploding. They have hit the self-construct button. They've not had any possession, and when they do, they've not. That man Owen Farrell hasn't anticipated. Finn Russell knows how to read an intercept. Gets in front to George Cruz, and from there he's got a 45-meter run in. And with England all heading towards Scotland's goal line, nobody was quick enough to turn and reel him in. Scotland have levelled things up. It's absolutely unbelievable scenes here at Murrayfield. We're actually at Twickenham. I can Sorry. understand it. It doesn't normally happen in this part of the world. I just sensed it from the Scottish fans around me who are shouting at me here. It's incredible. You got yourself out of that one very skillfully. Suddenly those Scottish voices are being heard. They were utterly silent in the first 40. 
My oh my. Whatever happens from here, this has certainly been the most extraordinary game of this Six Nations Championship. I hope the Scottish fans here at Twickenham have, have stayed past half time because believe me, there would have been a few that would have thought that this game was going to only go one way. I, mean, I reckon there might have been one or two dogs being walked through the Scottish capital over the course of the last hour. They'll get back into the kitchen and they will not believe what they're seeing here. England 31, Scotland 31. Here goes Farrell. On to Noel. Noel with the offload. That was outstanding. There goes Henry Slade. And he did have a foot in touch. Federico Anselmi, the Argentinian assistant referee on the far side, has got the flag up. And perhaps not surprisingly, tempers are getting a little frayed. And both sides looking to continue to play. Clever play there yeah, by Elliot Daly, the brilliant. ball has to break the line for that to be out. But look at this, Byron McGuigan comes flying in, looking as if he's going to go for an intercept here. As it is, he got to Man Manu Tuolangi, good tackle by Maitland, just doing enough to bring Slade down, the moisture on the surface, having him finish up in touch. Well, in those little contests within a contest, that was Saracens against Exeter. Maitland, the Saracens fullback. Slade for Exeter. Josh Strauss grabs the loose ball. Even the little 50 50 is going a bit Scotland's way. A skew throw by Fraser Sorry, Brown. Could, could well have gone England's way as it is. Fell to Josh Strauss. 1983. The last time Scotland won the Calcutta Cup at Twickenham. We saw the beast and the brute of England in the first 40. We've seen them fall apart in the opening 22 minutes of this second period. No. Oh. Farrell. Turlangi getting hunted down by Harris. Here's Youngs. Farrell. Youngs, that's one for Noel to chase. Josh Strauss is underneath it, so too Maitland. And now Maitland breaks clear. Forces Elliot Daly to turn, and that has gone into touch. The final quarter of the games so far in this Six Nations Championship have been the most positive for England with regards to their tries and the worst for Scotland with regards to their concessions but this game has a different feel about it now doesn't it Scotland getting the bounce of the ball making opportunities England seemingly making unforced errors the like of which we didn't see anything near in the first half well it was 20 minutes against Wales which really cost them that was over the other side of the Seven Bridge. 20 minutes here, proving very expensive in front of their home crowd. That was Byron McGuigan being enveloped. Here's Greg Laidlaw. taken by Vunapola, being hit almost immediately by Johnny Gray. Hi, hi, hi. And Bradbury letting that one fall. Here goes Hamish Watson. Russell sends Darcy Graham after it. 
Well, in the end, it beat, beat both Graham and Johnny May. It did. It's another net gain. I thought Bradbury got lucky there. I thought that went forward off him. Yeah, it just brushed through his fingers, I think, didn't it? Yeah, again, good game management by Finn Russell, though. Understanding the pressure that England are under here. Conceded 24 unanswered points in this second half so far. Well, 13 out of 13 for Jamie George. Becomes 14 out of 14. One part of the England game that has been flawless so far. Tackle now. Oh, boy. Johnny May in periods under that high ball. Well, rather given away by Ben Youngs. Plenty of time there for Sean Maitland to pick his spot. Hold, hold! Bunapola just keeping his left toe off the whitewash. Some really tired bodies out there He's already. Last Still feet. With... Last feet. 14 minutes to Last go of this fight. game, you can just see the kick chase intense, intensity has gone down a bit. The speed of everything just gone down that little bit. Understandably oh, so, oh, oh. it's been so physical and frenetic. Twelve, eighteen! Finn Russell Thank you. sends Elliot Daly backwards. Improves the angle, throw in Farrell. Holding White. 12. Yep, yeah. Here's Darcy Graham. Well, he got hit hard. And the referee has said nothing. Taken four by Noel. Oh, there. That was a big collision. I just think Darcy Graham kicked a bit late. Owen Farrell was committed. Youngs. For both Farrell and Darcy Graham getting some treatment. Here's Greg Laidlaw. Time off. Well, the referee has called time off. Let's take another look at that collision. Yeah, I don't like the way that Owen Farrell's led with his shoulder there. I know he's committed to it. As it is, he turns into Darcy Graham as he chips it. And I know he's committed, but that's that's a bit reckless for me. I mean, the reality is, it, does, it doesn't matter whether you're committed or not. If you're leading with the shoulder, there are no arms concerned. And I think the collision, is fair to say, was with the head, so... Well, the referee is now taking a look at this. And this, in the context of this match, could be a crucial decision. It's a nasty collision, isn't it? I understand you're committed, but the, the, not, the player not in possession is responsible for the player who is. And also, you can be committed, but you've got to be committed with what is otherwise a legal challenge. Timing looks okay. Yeah. Is he, is he is he protecting himself by tucking that, or is he actually dropping his shoulder there? Why didn't use his arm? Well, we're now hearing that Farrell didn't use his arm. Now, this appears to be leading towards a penalty. It remains to be seen. Okay, Stevie, so what I'm going to do here, there may even be play with an accelerated Both of them have run into each other. I think Watt's well. actually trying to protect, protect himself rather than leading with the shoulder, and both of them actually end up on the floor. So I'm going to restart play here with a penalty to blue. Have you got anything else? That's correct. All right, thank you. Well, that's probably a fair call, isn't it? Are you They're going to start with a Scotland yeah. penalty. So restarting play here with a penalty to you, OK? Just it's a, a huge call. Yeah, both came off and pretty I have bad. to say, okay. 
if Darcy Graham had carried that, would that tackle have been a legal tackle? No, I don't think so. I, th I thought it was a shoulder to head. It's, I, I'm, I'm sad to say that I think it's ended. Darcy Graham's at. Oh no, Darcy Graham's he's managed to get up. Sean Maitland's giving way now. There's Adam Hastings, who's come on at fullback. Up there. Sean Maitland's had a good game at fullback actually. You've got an option here. Adam Hastings, landed. good impact off the bench. Yeah. Last up week, in amongst all of those injuries he against Wales for Scotland, what a 13 minutes he has! But for Scotland, right here, oh, yeah. even scoreboard with 13 uh, minutes to go, go back 10 and, we'll play. and a good opportunity with the penalty here. Play Greg back. Laidlaw points at the Stop sticks. Ball. Well. It's one of those, if it Lights. sails through the post, it is quite magnificent. Yeah. If it falls a long way short or gets blown about in the wind, you do wonder about the decision the being made. Yeah. Last week, uh, I questioned Timing. whether Scotland should have taken points at times. This is, a, this is almost a shot to nothing whereby you expect that even if it misses, you'll hopefully end up with a line-out or a counter-attacking opportunity. It was only 25 minutes ago that I was saying for Gregor Townsend's squad this was about damage limitation and there was very little chance they could win this game. Unbelievably, Greg Laidlaw has a shot at goal here to give Scotland the lead for the first time, having been 28-0 down. Well, 46 metres. Half the length of the field. Well, I reckon if he'd hit that straight, it might have just about had the length. Yeah, it wasn't his cleanest strike, and that's at the very, very end of his range. Perhaps one that if Stuart Hogg had been playing, he would have had a go at himself. Because that, as it is, Owen Farrell will get a start to the 22. Plenty of hang time on that. Harris it is, who claims it. He gets forced back by Joe Launchbury. Drive forward by Johnny Gray. Russell. Well, it came off Owen Farrell, who rather mistimed his jump, and it went forward. What? And it's smart game management five. from Scotland here, understanding, as I said moments ago, England are the side under pressure here. Finn Russell there going to the skies. He oh, oh, on a touch by Farrell there. And he went up too soon, didn't he? He did. He did. Amazing the effect that pressure has, even on the top players in the world. Yep, bring him on. Substitution. Who's coming off, mate? England making another change. On comes George Ford. Off goes Owen Farrell. But it's quite a call in these circumstances. Ten minutes remaining, you take off the England captain, their playmaker. What's the thinking? It's a huge call because they're different players. If, if, if I'm looking for my, my ten to see the team through, get some field position, manage territory, then Farrell's probably my man. Ford, undoubtedly a very good handler of the ball, good distributor. But he's an area, it's a channel whereby Scotland, I would expect, will aim to target. He's not the greatest defender. Pick up from Strauss. There's Russell. Through goes Harris. The tackle looked a bit high, but also before that, the pass was forward. Well, Owen Farrell has gone off, and George Ford not only playing at fly half, but also now the captain. Yeah, you just see the contrast with the accuracy or lack of it on that strike move compared to the one that Darcy Graham scored off from the line out. Greg Laidlaw just pushing that pass forward, Chris Harris just overran it slightly. 
gives England an opportunity to get themselves some field position. Is it? This is the sort of scrum on the area of the field that has a scrum half with a pace outside. Daly and Nowell on that right-hand channel. He's licking your lips at. Expect Greg Laidlock to cover that blind side. We still have nine minutes to go. So much can happen, but perhaps still with reinforcing the point if the score's finished level. Scotland will retain the Calcutta Cup. A carry there from Ellis Genge. Yeah, Bradbury in there up. trying to strip it. His Youngs. On there from George Ford. That was Cole down on one knee. Dan Cole earning his 85th cap today. The same as that man, Ben Youngs. Here's Curry. Youngs goes aerial. Finn Russell waits for it. it went forward yep. off the hands of the Scotland fly half. Oh, yep. There's Ben Youngs on to Genge. No. Ford. Here's Cruz. Important catch there for Hastings, just sinking to his knees, almost out of, out of a sense of relief, I think. Yeah, but you sense the crowd here are so on edge, booing the kicking strategy there. England inside Scotland's half, Ben Young's going for the skies. Real tension flowing throughout this crowd and through both sides, understandably so. Final seven minutes of this Six Nations Championship, and it is right on a knife edge. Yes, yes. Well, another generation of Hastings have been heroes in this fixture in the past. I, I do wonder if the latest of them, Adam, might play his part. Scotland will have the put in at the scrum. Seven minutes to go. Twickenham is on edge. Oh, we had Scott Hastings, Adam's uncle. And obviously Gavin's brother at halftime coming along here and talking about records. I think the only one he was thinking about was the losing deficit of a Scottish side here at Twickenham. Instead, the only record that's properly under threat is breaking that 1983, the last time that Scotland won here at Twickenham against England. What a game we've had. Well, we did have the 12 all draw okay. exactly 30 years ago. And that's the closest Scotland have come in the meantime. It is 31 points apiece here in 2019. What a finish to rugby's greatest championship. Confirmation there of the alterations being made. Ben Spencer, another Saracen, comes onto the pitch. The conditions aren't getting any easier, are they? You can see the sheet of rain coming down. This game, if it's going to be settled with a winner, it's just going to come down to the finest margins. You've been involved in big internationals like this in a seething cauldron, 80-odd thousand people, all of them making themselves heard. How, how clear are the messages that come from off the pitch to the players? You know, by the time you get to this stage of the game, you've got a feel on the field. Greg Laidlaw will have gone on with clear instructions and understanding. It's now just all about execution. The coaches can't do anything, they can't say anything to really impact things. You can see that Scotland have had a strategy. For Eddie Jones, it's all about just trying to squeeze Scotland and get territory. Both sides, territory is so important because this could just come down to a penalty kick to win the match. There goes Elliot Daly. Scotland, though, they can't afford yeah, to allow him, him get into full flight. Ball it's lost forward. Here title. goes Magnus Bradbury. On to Fraser Brown. Brown getting through the tackle that time of Luke Cowan Dickey. Here's Hamish Watson. Watson, just for a moment, doing what he did against Wales a week ago. Russell. 
No hands out. Rock. That time there was a bit of an issue. Oh, he's burst oh. through. Here goes Johnson. Sam Johnson going for gold. Can he get there? He can. It's a fairy tale finish. Surely the most extraordinary test match you've ever seen. Oh, my goodness. I cannot believe what I have just seen here. Symptomatic Billy Vinopola. How many errors does he ever make in a game? Not many. As it was, Hamish Watson ran into Tom Curry, but off the back of it, he knocked him over. Finn Russell unleashes Sam Johnson. Look at the fight of the Australian-born Scotsman through the challenges of two or three defenders. He dots down next to the post protector. And finally, we'll see some emotion. Gregor Townsend punches the air. That coaching box, you will never see a contrasting behaviour in a coaching box in the space of 40 minutes, more than that one. Greg Laidlaw's going to make it seven. It's Scotland's game to lose now. What a second half comeback. Incredible. Look at this from Finn Russell. He does him with the eyes. Nathan Hughes bites oh. in. Manu Tualangi drifts out. Sam Johnson, look at the work he's still got to do, though. Steps now. Pulls in daily. Get off. Ben Spencer, get off. Yeah, all yours. I'm in. A change being made by England. Ben Teo has come on, he's replaced Manu Tuolangi. Yeah, that's, that's you there, bring him down here please. Yeah. Bring him down. No. But one of Scottish rugby's yeah, biggest yeah. fans is J.K. Oh, Rowling. Excellent. She's written a few scripts in her time. She wrote this one, you certainly wouldn't believe it. Full of fantasy and make-believe. I'll continue making terrible predictions like I did at half-time if it... If it ends up in a, in a game like this, no matter who comes out as the winner, what a contest we have seen here at Twickenham. Stays through the middle. Well, Scotland will soon start to see the finish line. They're in the mists in the distance in southwest London. They've got to keep playing. Two and a half minutes to survive. What a comeback this has been. I'm not sure the pick and go is the tactic. Two and a half minutes out, though. Just keep building that territory. No, no. England will look to suffocate 20. Scotland and force an error or a penalty. Ball is out. Ball is out. Yep. Here goes Ellis Gens. Johnson's got it. The Scotland hero. Yep. Lost now. Inside of half time. England were leading this match by 31 points to nil. 38 unanswered points from the Scots. And now we're down to the last 90 seconds. Stuart McAnally charging down Owen Farrell. That was after 35 minutes. It started the comeback. And it's just gathered more and more momentum ever since. And Scotland have ridden their luck, haven't they? If you think about the charge down and the intercept of Finn Russell, they've just taken the flow and it's come their way. And my goodness, they've made it count. The final minute. Space for Slade. Is there a final twist? Johnny May. May doing well Rock to keep it alive. Hands away. 45 seconds Easy. between Scotland and bringing Don't in climb. to an end a long sequence of failure at Twickenham. The 5th of March, 1983. The last time the Scots won here in the Calcutta Cup. The clock ticking down, Ben Spencer onto Ford. He's apprehended by Gray. 
There's Spencer. Another carry from the men in white. Nathan Hughes. No. England have imploded in the last 45 Two minutes of this center. contest. At first you're OK. They do you now, though, it. have a penalty. It on the ground. So worst case scenario for Scotland, oh, yeah, they retain so. the Calcutta Cup as holders of it, but yeah, at the yeah. same time, I was just about to say the importance of discipline because we can't finish on a penalty. So George Ford will kick for the corner. We saw England's mall earlier in the day, whereby Tom Curry picked up the try. Just simple, effective really execution. Up. England would much rather finish this game with a draw and give up when the you Calcutta kick it, Cup it's a bit of a giveaway. than lose here. That's why he's on the ball. Isn't it? It is the final play. All right, this is you here. We are back. Having fluffed their lines throughout this second half, can England finally put it together and save Eddie Jones' day? Cowan Dickey finds Cruz. Seventy odd thousand Englishmen. Advantage. And there's a penalty advantage coming for Stopping England the now. Ball. Advantage. There's Spencer. On to Ford. Spencer again. On to Noel. Noel. The man who got the try fest underway in the second minute. Nathan Hughes that time. It's still an advantage to England. It's a free hit. Scotland will be determined to force them wide. Spencer. He's had that canny knack of scoring tries all season for, Sa for Saracens. Can he get one for England at their time of need? There's Nathan Hughes waiting to pick up. He looks left and right. Gains that turn. This penalty advantage is right in the shadow of the post. There's Hughes. He offloads it to Teo. There's Slade, on there to Noel. No, 16, last feet. Don't forget there's still the penalty advantage being played. It will be right in front of the posts. No. There's Curry. It's a killer blow for that man, Gregor Townsend, and his coach's team. Just the pressure at the end. The difference that penalty advantage makes. The ability to have a free hit and continue to hammer the line, knowing that no matter what happens, you have an advantage to come back. But it was brilliant Scottish defence. Hastings yeah, and Graham on that wing again, ball. stopping yeah, now. But as it is, finally the dam broke and George Ford got over. I know it's counterintuitive, but you do wonder. They might have been, if not happy, under the circumstances, partially content to allow them to score in the corner. It would have made the conversion so difficult. In the end, four goes under, the try is converted, and it has ended in a dramatic draw. Just as it did back in 1989, 30 years ago, but it is Scotland who retain the Calcutta Cup. The final score at Twickenham, England 38, Scotland 38.